Okay, in this video, we're going to look at variable frequency drives, VFDs. Now, this is a variable frequency drive here. It's made by Tico, originally by Westinghouse. Now, this motor drive can run and control a three-phase industrial motor. Now, back in the 1800s, Nikola Tesla gave us three-phase power distribution and three-phase motors. And that changed the industrial world. Three-phase became the world standard, and the three-phase motor was a real workhorse because it was rugged, simple, and easy to maintain. Now, three-phase power was restricted to industry because if you wanted three-phase power into your house, the power company would have to bring it in special and it would be very expensive. So we were stuck with single-phase 120 volt and 240 volt. So any motors in our house were single-phase motors, and they had starting capacitors, starting windings, and centrifugal switches, and they were, they were uh, harder to maintain. So if you have a project where you need a motor, now you could have a, a three-phase motor in your house because this variable frequency drive will take a single phase, 120 or 240, and change it to three-phase to run your three-phase motor. Also, you have a speed control, which is this pod here. We actually can control the speed of the motor. So now you can have a project with speed control and three-phase power. Okay, here's our wiring diagram and schematic of our variable frequency drive. And if we look at the very top left, we can see the AC power source. Now that's their input AC power. That would be single phase 120 volt or 240 volt. And that's fed into terminals L1 and L3 of the variable frequency drive. And if you look to the right, we can see the output, the inverter output T1, T2, T3. That's a three phase output to our three phase motor. Now if you look down on the left, you can see five push button switches. And they're labeled multifunction input. Now each one of these switches can be programmed. So you could have a start switch, a stop switch, a reverse, forward, or a jog. So these are totally programmable. And if you look to the right, you can see an RJ45 connector. Now that's an RS485 port. So we could use Modbus and we could connect this up to a PLC uh, for PLC control. And if you look down on the right hand side, you can see uh, really output for control and uh, multifunction output voltage, zero to 10 volts for control. But what I want to focus on is the very bottom left with our frequency reference or PID. Now this variable frequency drive has a 32-bit ARM microcontroller, so it can do PID, so you can build some very neat projects. Now also this input is used for, for speed control. So instead of using the pot on the front of the VFD, we could use an external pot connected to this port here for speed control. So it gives an output of 10 volts, you can see 10 volts and ground, analog ground, A ground, and the wiper will go into AVI, that's analog voltage in, from 0 to 10 volts. So we could vary that pot, external pot, to control a motor from stop to, to full speed. Now we could also use a, a 0 to 20 milliamp loop, and that's labeled ACI, analog current input. So this is very versatile, uh, this is very smart, it has, it's run on a 32-bit microcontroller, so there's lots of options to, to this variable frequency drive. Okay, this motor drive comes in three voltage classes. So we have a 115 volt class, a 230 volt class, and a 460 volt class. So you have to decide which one you need for your project. You have to decide what kind of power input you have, either 120 volts or 240 volts, and what kind of motor you want to drive, uh, the horsepower rating. So you have to look at this chart and see which one that's applicable to your to your project. Okay, here's a list of all the part numbers for the three classes of variable frequency drives. And if you look at the top, we, we can see the 115 volt class. Now the input voltage range is 100 volts to 120 volts, and that's at 50 or 60 hertz. And it can run up to a one horsepower motor. Now the second class, the 230 volt class, the input voltage range is 200 volts to 240 volts and we could run up to a three horsepower motor. Now the third class, the 460 volt class, the only option is a three phase input. So in, in, our, in our projects, we'll be working with residential power, 100, 120 volt and 240 volt. So we'll just be using the very first two classes. Okay, I have my variable frequency drive powered up and you can see it's indicating a stop zero. So that's our, that's our speed. So the motor would be stopped right now. So if I increase the speed of the motor, you can see increasing there. Now that's the frequency of the three-phase power that's fed to the motor. So that would be 30.27 hertz. So this is a 60 hertz motor. 
So it would max out at 60 hertz, that would be the maximum speed. And if it was a 50 hertz motor, it would max out at 50 hertz. So there we have total control of the speed of the motor by this speed pot. I can take it back down to stop. Now we also could have external control, like you saw in the, in the schematic. If you look down at the terminal strip, you can see the 10 volts on the ground. So we could hook up a pot similar to this across the 10 volts to ground and then feed, it, feed the wiper into the AVI input and that would control the motor externally. We could also use Arduino Raspberry Pi with a digital analog converter and feed that into the AVI input and we could control the motor uh, using a microcontroller like, like the Arduino which we'll see later on. So next I'm going to show you a project that uses three phase motors and the, it's all powered by single phase and it's an apple sorting and packing machine so I'll run a little video of that and we can see how we could use three phase motors and power the whole system with a single phase. Okay the first thing we do is drop a bin of apples into a thousand gallon water tank and all the apples will float to the top. Now a pump circulates water to create a current in the stream so we get a flowing river type action which keeps the apples moving along for the next process. Now any bad apples are taken out of the line right away using this step conveyor and they're loaded into a bin. Now here's the controllers for the step conveyor and the feeding brush and you can see the speed on the display, the speed indication. Now on the terminal strip you can see we're using the AVI input so we're using external potentiometers to control the speed of these two motors using these motor drives. Now this conveyor belt is feeding the apples into the next process which is the scrubbing and washing of the apples. Now the direction of rotation of each roller brush is staggered so two adjacent rollers are spinning in opposite direction to create a scrubbing action but the clockwise rollers spin a little bit faster to keep the, the apples moving forward. So here's all the controllers for the, for the brushes. So we set the speed so, so, so the brushes will, will scrub and keep the, keep the apples moving in the forward direction. Now we have to put the apples into single file before they're fed into the camera for scanning to get the size of the apples. So here they go along a V-belt. Now there's a motor for each side of the V on the V-belt and one motor is spinning a little bit faster than the other so the V-belt will keep the apples in single file. So it's critical that we have the speed set correctly. Then they're sent into the camera and before they go into the camera they have to be separated and they have to be spinning so the camera could take about 30 uh, scans of the apple to get the correct size of the apple. And after they go through the camera they're put into a cup. Now the cup is sent down the conveyor belt and it exits out uh, the certain conveyors for the different sizes of apples. Now the computer knows how far to send the apple because it has a measuring distance uh, system using a Hall effect that measures the distance of each tray of each cup and then it dumps it down and there they are at the very end and then they're fed back into the beginning with empty cups.